Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to tell you this game's with their time and bandwidth. Today's game is Dune Imperium, the digital version. The 6th highest rated board game on Board Game Geek finally gets a digital conversion. Does this electronic version spice things up enough? Let's find out. Dune Imperium is a board game turned digital that centers around everybody wanting a piece of that drug planet. It was the 60s, where a planet made of drugs sounded totally rad, and still sounds totally rad. Yeah, anyway, the board game Dune Imperium, for those familiar with the terminology, is a hybrid worker placement and deck builder, leaning quite heavily into the deck building portion. During the round, you'll play a card from your hand with the colors on the side indicating where a worker can be placed. Workers can either be put on Arrakis itself, should the card match, usually earning resources, or in one of two influence slots for diplomacy. There's four factions to vie for, and placing them not only gives rewards, but also increases your friendliness with them, which can earn victory points among other things. Speaking of victory points, there's really only two ways to earn them, the aforementioned diplomacy and end of round battles. Every round, there will be a big fight, and whoever deploys the highest military might will win. The rewards change depending on the battle, with stronger ones usually showing up near the end, meaning knowing when to deploy troops and when to hold reserves for the next battle is critical. Cards in hand as well as tactical cards can turn tides, and those tactical cards can also be used for tons of other things like augmenting cards, getting resources, and more. You start with two workers, but play your cards right and you can earn one more, as well as one that can be rented each round. Once you're out of workers, you reveal your hand, buy cards to add to your deck, and resolve the battle. See, one of the tricks that makes Imperium interesting is that leftover cards aren't dead cards in hand. Instead, they provide you with the resources that you'll use both to cinch battles in your favor as well as buy new cards to add to your deck deck at end of round. The loop continues until 10 rounds pass or one player gets 10 victory points, which makes that round the last one. The digital translation not only offers the usual AI and online modes, but a neat challenge mode where you play against AI but with modifiers like increasing diplomacy rewards. The game also does well in converting the fiddly bits of the game, of which there's a lot to keep track of, into a more streamlined experience. And that's basically Dune Imperium. It's a fairly straightforward conversion of the base game, just automating a lot of the stuff to make it go faster. So what do I like about Dune Imperium? Well, the conversion does a fantastic job not only translating the game in its entirety to digital, but being very clear not only on what is going on, but what options you have each round, abilities you can use, and so on. I imagine the footage you're watching looks very intimidating, but the game itself is actually quite intuitive and incredibly addicting once you get into the flow of it. Additionally, the AI is a really solid difficulty, something that isn't as common as you'd think with these board game conversions. Easy is a great starting point, but isn't a pushover, and the harder difficulties employ genuine strategy and make for a fantastic test of your skills. And lastly, this game really looks good. The production values are very high, the art is taken straight from the board game, which already looked great and was inspired by the recent movies, and the large number of modes, particularly that challenge mode, means the game will stay fresh for a long time. When it comes to bad, I did encounter a handful of bugs, mostly on the Xbox version, not as much on the PC version, and this was usually around UI elements breaking with the controller, but I also had stuff like the tutorial get stuck, and occasionally a turn or two would get stuck. If that happened, you could save and reload and it worked just fine, but it was a little annoying. Speaking of the controller, while it is playable, it is definitely not optimal. There's a lot of stuff that you need to interact with and check on across the whole board, and I dare say a controller isn't quite up to the task should you try to leave the standard path of interaction. And lastly, the game does lack the expansions that are in the physical version, which I'll be honest, do dramatically improve the experience having played the game physically. They are coming, thankfully, and the base game does have a decent amount of content on its own, but going from physical to digital does feel a bit like stepping back in time here. As you know, I rank games here on 3-point scale, must play, maybe consider, and don't bother, and Dune Imperium is a phenomenal version of an excellent and well-loved board game. It joins the ranks of Gloomhaven and Wingspan, of digital conversions that go the extra mile to work in the electronic format while still maintaining what makes those games so addicting. If you enjoy deck building games with plenty of nuance and tons of strategic choices, Dune Imperium is sugar spice and everything nice. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you played Dune Imperium, did you play the board game? Are you going to check out this digital conversion? What's your thought on digital board games? Let me know in the comments. But regardless, go out there and if you enjoy deck builders, make sure you check out Dune Imperium.